Hello, I am Matt Lina. Today we are going to be talking about Lewis and Kekul structures. This is organic chemistry concept number one, in which I'm going to help you in learning the basics. I'm going to help you in getting the grades, and I'm going to help you in getting into medical or dental school or whatever your goals happen to be in terms of going through organic chemistry. Now, we are going to simply talk about how to draw Lewis structures and more, the easy way. Our goal is, after this, for you to be able to draw simple, uncharged Lewis or Kekul structures. How we do this, we follow a five-step protocol of number one. First thing you do, you look at the formula. You know what you're dealing with. And then you find the elements on the periodic table. Once you have found the elements, you count the electrons. Once you have counted the electrons, you draw structures while remembering one bond is equal to two electrons. And in a bond, one electron comes from each atom being bonded, usually. And remember that we're going to actually be doing Kekul structures, not traditional Lewis structures, because Kekul structures are what chemists use almost all the time. The most important thing, however, is that we count the electrons, because if we don't, we can run into some sort of problems. Electrons never, ever, ever gained, nor are they lost, unless the compound has a formal charge. Counting electrons is important, because you can lose them, you can screw up in a myriad of different ways if you don't count the electrons properly. Something that I found to make it easier, though, is if you start process always by drawing all the bonds, all of the bonds first, and draw them as single bonds. Then after you're done doing that, you deal with the leftover electrons. That is the single most foolproof way that I have found in order to make Lewis structures that don't have errors in them. I'll give you an example. Let's look at methane. I want to pull up the periodic table there, and it's a little bit condensed version. It only has the first 18 elements on it, but we'll find them. We can see carbon is element number six. We can find it exactly there on the periodic table. And we can see, because it's in column 4a, that it has four valence electrons. So those are the ones that we're going to count. Hydrogen is in column 1a rather than 4a like carbon is, which means that it is contributing one electron to the total per hydrogen. So that means the total number of electrons contributing contributed by both carbon and hydrogen is eight. So whatever our structure is, it is going to have to have eight electrons or it is invalid. <coughs> Now, because carbon is bonded to four hydrogens, we draw the carbon first as the central atom. And we begin, like our hint says, by drawing four single bonds first. And then we start counting electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight electrons are already accounted for in this structure, which means that if four of them are coming from carbon, one, two, three, four, which they are, and four of them are coming from hydrogen, one, two, three, four, which they are, our structure is now done. It is complete. This is how we draw methane in a Kekul or Lewis structure form. Similarly, we can draw boron trichloride. 
a boron we see in our periodic table being right there in column 3a, which means that it is contributing three valence electrons to the total. And chlorine is right here in column 7a, which means it is contributing seven electrons to the total multiplied by three is 21. So the total number of electrons that we're going to have to deal with is 24. Now the interesting thing about this entire thing is when we draw our bonds, that is not going to account for all of our electrons. But we'll start. We'll start by looking at boron and seeing what goes on. And then we can figure it out from that point on. We have boron here. And we'll say one, two, three bonds, each single bonded to a chlorine. Now that means that all of boron's electrons, one, two, three, are taken care of. But all of chlorine's electrons are not, because each chlorine needs to have seven electrons, and they're only contributing one. So the way that we draw it is we will draw three lone pairs of electrons around each chlorine. Four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. That is our complete Kekul diagram. We can also draw it in abbreviated form by forgetting all the lone pairs hanging off of the chlorines because they're not the central element. So we can actually draw our diagram this way as well, and it's just as valid as this one. Both of these diagrams are answers to this particular problem. Now we're starting to go into something a little bit more complicated. Chlorine trifluoride. Now chlorine is the central atom of this one. And we can find it here, here, in column 7a. Which means it is contributing seven valence electrons. Now fluorine, we can also find there in column 7a. And it is contributing seven valence electrons times three fluorines is 21 total valence electrons for 20, a total of 28 electrons that we're going to need to account for in our drawing. So we'll start the same way that we always start. We draw the chlorine, then we draw our three fluorines like this, and then we can already draw the lone pairs around fluorine like that. So all the 21 electrons from fluorine are accounted for, but only three of the electrons from chlorine are accounted for. So that means that in order to make seven, we put two lone pairs around the chlorine. So that chlorine now is, is contributing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. We can also draw this in abbreviated form like this with the chlorine, three fluorines, and because the fluorines aren't the center atom, we don't need to add all the extra electrons, but we still need to add the two lone pairs to chlorine just to illustrate the fact that there are other things going around the central atom. Both of these structures are valid and complete. Next, we will deal with xenon tetrafluoride. Now, xenon is a noble gas, which means we can find it here in column 8a. So we know that it is going to be contributing eight electrons to the total. And fluorine, we've already found here in column 7. So we know that it's going to be 7 times 4 is equal to 28 for a total of 36 electrons that we need to account for in our drawing. Now this might be a little weird because it doesn't fulfill any kind of octet rule, but we'll just proceed forward anyway. We draw the central xenon. We draw four fluorines. 
just like this, fluorine, 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 fluorine. And then we will draw all the lone pairs around the fluorines just for the sake of being able to count electrons. Now all the seven electrons per fluorine are accounted for in drawing these bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times four. So we, we now have 28 electrons from fluorine and four electrons from xenon. One, two, three, four. So the other remaining four electrons from xenon in order to give a total of eight need to be put on there as two lone pairs. So we can also draw this uh, in a more abbreviated form as xenon, two, three, four, the lone pairs, and four fluorines getting attached to it. Both of these structures are completely valid to be giving as an answer to this particular problem. Finally, we'll deal with phosgene. Phosgene was a nerve gas used in World War I having the formula COCl2. Now we've already seen, I think everything except for oxygen. Oxygen is here in group six. So it is contributing six electrons. Carbon is here in group 4a. So it's contributing four electrons. And chlorine is here in group 7a, contributing seven electrons times two is equal to 14 for a total of 24 electrons that our drawing needs to account for. We'll start with our centralized carbon and we start with a single bond to all of our substituents, our chlorine, our chlorine, and our oxygen. Now if we draw in our lone pairs, like it's kind of nice to do, three, four, five, six, we realize that we have a crisis. The chlorine's uh, electrons are all accounted for. Each of them is contributing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But the carbon's electrons are not all accounted for because it's contributing one, two, three. And the oxygen's electrons are not all accounted for because it's contributing one, two, three, four, five. Now we could go and draw an extra one electron on carbon and an extra one electron on oxygen, but those would be called free radicals. And we are not drawing free radicals right now. They're very unstable. They react at the first sign of touching anything. So because we're drawing actual stable compounds, we can take that extra electron and turn it into a bond between oxygen and carbon. Now carbon is contributing one, two, three, four electrons, and oxygen is contributing one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is a valid structure. We can also write it in abbreviated form like this. The chlorines, the carbon, and the oxygen with no lone pairs hanging off of the chlorines and the oxygen because they're not contributing at all to the shape of the center formed around this carbon right there. That is all the examples that we have for today. But it bears repeating a couple things. What steps we use to follow it? We look at the formula. We find the elements on the periodic table and count electrons. Very important to count the electrons. Then we draw the structures, remembering that one bond is two total electrons, one of which comes from one atom and one of which comes from the other, usually. Secondly, we remember that we drew Kekul structures, not Lewis structures, because it was a little bit more of a basic and easy way of doing so. We remember, of course, when counting electrons, they are never gained, nor are they lost, unless the compound has a formal charge. And we always start by drawing all of our bonds as single bonds before dealing with leftover electrons. Once again, I am Matt Lina, and I am here to help you in learning the basics, getting the grades, and getting into medical and dental school. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.